Happy Thursday. Hope you're still alive. Hope everybody's still alive. International Master William Pascal, a.k.a. Slagy, or Slagy, however you pronounce it. Sparkle Horse is my name on Lee Chess. We have our Twitch stream up and running now. International Master William Pascal, that's my real name. We're going to be streaming our subscriber stream with game analysis. A way of giving back to my subscribers here on Twitch by analyzing their games. Um, I think the experiment yesterday went pretty well. We did some other serious chess business. Analyzed some Bra uh, Blackburn games and um, also some opening analysis on the Carol Khan. If anybody ever wants to see the replays of our channel, check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I am just busy, busy, busy. So I've got at least six games so far. Ubadis, Mr. Slow Hand, Astrobate, Princess Chess, Sumaher, and Antoni. And I'm sure that I missed somebody. I'm certain that I missed somebody. Let me know who you are, somebody. I'm just getting myself organized, everybody. We're usually a minute, a few minutes late on Thursday, but I'm willing to put in the time to get through these games. All right. Welcome everybody. Please remember to support the stream and donate and subscribe. Please. Surprise me. That's why I put up. Surprise me with with a donation or a <clears throat> subscription here. Or just subscribe for free over on YouTube. Appreciate it guys. Please follow me on leechess.org. The best place to play chess online for sure. It's free. Juicebox Wizard. Wow. Great to see you, man. What's up? We're all in chess heaven. In chess heaven. In heaven. I'm trying to remember the lyrics to a Pixie song. They're evading me now. Anyways, if it's chess heaven, it's not that bad. Could be worse. Alright, it's interesting to see Juicebox. Anyone get robbed by GameStop trading today? I saw an article about how like Reddit basically destroyed them or something. I heard it was a Reddit post that like destroyed GameStop. Is that true? Princess Chess, how old are you again? You sure you're not in your 60s? What? What is that? What is that? I wouldn't even know like a Jefferson Starship song if I heard one. So. GameStop is some game store, but is it is it based in, in the UK or US? I don't even know. Um. I don't even know, like, I don't go to the, like, mall shopping these days. So I don't even know, like, what game stores there are. Alright, not relevant to what we're doing right now, though. Um, we're going to start with Ubatis. He actually submitted his game long ago. It's been ages ago. Ubatis. Speaking of games, Yobatis is a name from Assassin's Creed, apparently. It's also a Greek character or something like that. Yobatis. Ayubates. So I had to go way back to last week, like the 24th. No, that's even older. 21st. A slightly spoiled masterpiece. Submission for the stream. He also got a peak rating, though. Keep on analysis of opening stream. You like yesterday, Mr. Slow? You probably have to work at that time. 99% of chess players are unemployed losers. But we have a few exceptions here. If it wasn't for the exceptions, I don't think we can afford to do this stream. So thanks to Mr. Slowhand for going to work every day so he can donate 400 bits. He can't necessarily make it for the morning streams. He just donated 400 bits. He likes the analysis of openings. So it wasn't just analysis of openings. I split it up into two parts. We did um, 
Juicebox Wizard, you just noticed your subscription lapsed. You've got an active subscription. It says you're a 32 month subscriber. Is that how you showed up, you mean? You noticed your subscription lapsed? Because you are a current subscriber, evidently. Alright. Anyway, it's good to see you. Juicebox Wizard back. You bought this game. First game for today. Usually it takes me too long to get this thing started. Um, let's get it started and get it moving. But I wanted to say Wednesdays I started a new format. Mr. Slow just brought it up. I analyzed two Blackburn games from Vienna, 1873, which were both good. Player I really, I think, was was pretty cool. And um, we did some Carol Khan. Actually, Mr. Slow, you were here. I forgot. You were actually here. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, that that's a little worrisome. I don't want you to lose your job because you're watching our stream here. Not that important. Um, all right, so this is Yabatis' game. He's playing, he reached his peak rating around 2150, apparently, which is nice. So he's playing always knight c3, knight c6 based openings. Knight c3, knight c6, no, d6. It's kind of a weird move to play against knight c3. I mean, knight c3 in and of itself is weird. Probably his opponent just plays d6. You know, actually, I think d6 is a, is a kind of cool move against knight f3. Against knight f3, you're you're playing against this, this e5 square, in a sense, when you play d6. And if e4, you can transpose to the Sicilian. I'm not sure if I see a lot of independent significance here for d6. Cheers, everybody. It usually it usually tells you you're a subscriber in an annoying banner nonstop. I think a lot of stuff is under development here. Knight c3, d6, unusual move order. It's like, maybe he'll play d3 and his opponent will play knight c6, the symmetry. Padron and Tony, good to see you. Thanks for being a subscriber as well, guys. If you're a subscriber, you can submit a game to be analyzed here on the stream. I only have a few more places available for today. See, that's that's important. Mr. Slohan does 80% of the work. All right, they do need you then. <laughs> D6, E5, this is principled. So basically, it's looking like the old Indian. Black is, is one of these players who plays a categorical sort of old Indian against everything repertoire. I know that Simon Williams recommended that a while back. I always thought that was a little odd, but there's only a few systems that you can play sort of against everything, and the Indian, the old Indian is one of them. So that makes a good like video you could just make for anybody to learn. Has anybody submitted games that they played against me? Statistical chances of that, Dr. Chip Chance, relatively low. But it's better than winning the lottery. I don't know of that. I didn't really... I don't always check the games in advance. Um, I don't think this week... I don't think we've ever had any games submitted by people playing games against you. E4. Okay, so now it's it's the Vienna game for white. Against it's the Vienna game against the old Indian. Now this creates a situation. The pawns are the soul of chess. You have the majority there. Just a second. I just want to say how this pawn structure, which can arise in the sometimes the English with c4 two, the closed Sicilian. Basically, White has his break with f4 and black doesn't really have an answer in fact when black played knight f6 I was thinking like he might want to play f5 develop the pieces behind the skeleton of the pawn chain how do you guys feel about that do you guys ever play in girls I mean guys you know it's one of the sort of you know neutral 
Um, we call guys everybody. Yeah, everybody's a guys. But we've all played chess with ourselves. Let's admit it, you know. I, I admit it for everybody else. When you're bored, there's no one around. You're like 15 years old or 12 or whatever, you know. And even as an adult. You have a chess set, there's no one around. You can't resist the temptation of playing against yourself. I've done it. The hard part is like being impartial. Who can play a chess, chess game against themselves and, and remain impartial? You used to admit to doing it. But um, the best part is if you like dual personalities, that would be, that would be really interesting. I wonder if there's any stories of a, a chess player with dual personalities or multiple personalities able to play against themselves. That would be a really cool plot for like a TV show or something. All right, anyway. The old Indian, white has this break with that four black has nothing in return, no counterplay. So, I would consider playing f4 directly. The knight is less active on e2 than on f3. I guess if you're truly multiple personality disorder, you know, you can't cheat. Castle, castle, and then the setup again kind of quiet with knight e2. Knight on bd7 f4 and so now there's a problem with queen b6 knight g4 on the diagonal this happens in the king's indian attack too i think we have a problem here houston like i don't see an answer check king h1 There's essentially a double threat. Maybe the only try would be knight a4. That doesn't seem to work. Okay, there are there are possibilities with trapping the queen in some positions on f2, but I don't see how we're going to do that. This move doesn't seem to work. We just go check. Can't trap the queen here. Obviously, black has perpetual. Or this. But I don't want really want to trade pieces here with white. That's like the worst case scenario for black that white would equalize. Um so I don't like the look of this queen e1 and now we defend f2 but e3 is still a thing and this is a thing and this is a thing so what do we do yeah hand and brain with dual personalities that's a cool idea for a stream actually Maybe I'll, I'll have to create an alternate personality. I gotta do something desperate to gain more viewers. When I read that, I don't feel like it's on topic. The weird thing is that when I was a teenager, I played chess with myself and picked different styles for each me. One would be the strategic positional and the other was tactical. Some people just, you know, have their mind in the gutter. Um, that's their problem. But I understand completely what he's saying. I've done similar stuff. Yeah. 93. I mean, seriously, if you're trapped on a desert island and you had no one to play and you wanted to get better at chess, would it be possible? like Tom Hanks or something in Castaway. Could he have become a strong chess player by himself in isolation? 
playing against himself, pretending to be two different styles of players. All right, we can always do this, but this is a huge positional concession for white, to give up the good bishop here. Without the dark square bishop, it's very hard to execute a strong kingside attack. So, what's the conclusion, ladies and gentlemen? Anybody want to raise their hand and tell me the conclusion of all this long-winded analysis? What did he do wrong? He should have played like this guy, h3. It's a standard move, and Yabatis just left it out. You need to stop knight g4. You just have to calculate. How do you assess a knight for positional play there? Knights are good, but they're not as good as white's best minor piece, the Dark Square Bishop. I think this bishop is stronger than any knight. It's the strongest, you know, these two bishops, the two good bishops in this position that aren't really restricted. Those are the two strongest minor pieces on the board. They have the most range, the most power, they control the most squares. Five squares, but potentially power for more. You know, bishop on e3 controls a massive amount of squares, for example. With free movement, yeah, these pieces are the best minor pieces on the board. So it was a mistake. But black takes on f4, giving up his strong point here. And now it's a whole different ball game. Because on like check, king h1, knight g4, I can play d4. Thank you for giving up the strong point on e5. So black made fundamental mistakes. Missing knight g4 and then giving up the center. Now the knight is placed on a bad square. Another mistake. This knight has no, it has no future. Where is it gonna go? And look at that. What's the best minor piece on the board now? This one, developed from its original square. In terms of absolute mobility. And black's good bishop is restricted by Ibadis' pawn on f5. Black played horribly. Yabanis made one calculation mistake with with f4 too early. And this is also another another bad move, but it's getting to the point where it's hard to recommend good moves for black because he has so little space. He literally doesn't have any good moves. It looks like he might have d5 now. But you've got to be careful you don't get your queen trapped. For example, like d5, e5, queen e5, stuff like that, bishop f4. It looks like he doesn't get trapped, though, narrowly. Very narrowly, the black queen not getting trapped here. White's position still looks... It looks excellent. He plays d5, and white plays bishop f4. Black has bishop d6. So was this well thought out or not? I wonder about knight g3. Maybe, maybe instead of knight g3, we could have played something to keep black more bottled up. No? The question is, if you play bishop f4, then knight h5, and you're back to this, this drawing board again. The old drawing board. So I'm not sure exactly what the best move is for white here. Anybody? Can we try to build our position a little bit with queen e1? You bought us his favorite move, bishop d2, strangely. Okay, knight g3, this is the only chance for black to play d5. White has a huge space advantage. Bishop f4, bishop d6. And now trading pieces, I think, favors black slightly, especially since the situation is such that these pawns are fixed on the wrong color. And 
and black has some chances on the dark squares. This square is a bit of a problem for white now. No tipping of king yet. King tipping. It's like cow tipping. Speaking of tipping, thanks Mr. Slowhand for donating 400 bits. So you bonus please knight h5. That's not exactly developing. I don't know what would happen if, if black exchanged here first, for example. I guess knight f6 here, and then the old f6, which is always dangerous. The world's most dangerous pawn push. Probably the, the single most important pawn push in chess tactics, the theme of f6. That's always dangerous for black. So we have this, and this, and then this, and now this. And what did I say? The most dangerous pawn push in, in tactics. I think I had a tactics book by Curious. There, there's a couple of good tactics books I can remember. One by Curious, one by Richter. One of those books, there was some chapter involving F6. I think an entire chapter on this pawn push. Could knight f4 be slightly better than knight g3? I'm afraid like knight f4 isn't really going to stop anything. I'm curious what the, the truth is about this position. Could this be better move? It could be. But it's still not going to stop d5. Screw, like, screw the pawn. I mean, I guess you win a pawn. Do you though? Because c5, see? You're not really winning a pawn in all these variations. You're just going to like end up dropping a piece anyway at the end. It's so open. It's like a huge vacuum around the white king. You just drop a piece of the queen c5 check. I don't think you can truly stop d5. No matter what you do. Maybe king h1 is a decent move for white. Um, this is interesting though. I like putting the knight on the side of the board. Borg, Borg cube. But it's a tough question. I want to see what the Oracle says. I'm just really curious. I don't want to rely on this computer too much. It's like D4, duh. At first it was, it was talking about A4. The, the engine is just like D4, duh, you know. Now if D5, you've got E5 and it's over. This makes complete sense. F5 is well supported, that can't be undermined. Now you take away d5 because e5 is like game over. So black's only counterplay would be like c5. His only way of counterattacking the center would be c5. d4 is devastating. Not immediately, like we still have to build up, but this move would have would have killed the d5 counterplay. I don't like a4 as much. The computer was looking at a4, but I think that that piece is on a bad square, and and I don't really want to mess with it. I like it where it is. This is much better. And that's over. Black can't get the pieces out. The bishop can't come out. And without the d5 counterplay, he has nothing. So this gave black a chance. First of all, the exchange of pieces, which, by the way, is Yabatis' best minor piece. He, he's trading off here. Black is, is surviving here, it looks like. White did not play this perfectly, but nevertheless, it's interesting. Okay, now. We didn't intend this to be a perfect game. As usual, I spent too long in the first game. But welcome, everybody. Um, we spent too long in the first game. Let's just finish it up. Yabatis usually sends us sort of entertaining games. He doesn't mean it to be, like, super... Perfect. Zero sin upon loss. Black now cannot play g6 because of queen h6. 
and it's over. That's the primary threat with, with the F6 pawn. But there are other threats, unfortunately. If we take on G7 and he tries to hide behind the human shield pawn on G7, then there's the knight F6, knight F6, the knight E4, knight F6. I mean, the knight F6, knight F6. Um, so black is really in big trouble. You know, this reminds me a lot of the Queen's Gambit orthodox variation. Same thing, F6. Um, yeah, nice knowing you. Queen sack incoming, and then this, and then this, and then this. And now, for my next trick, man, that's annoying. There's no way to finish black off here. I guess we have to play rook f3, some sort of rook lift. What are we going to do? We just played rook c1. Wow, a rook sack. And he's got an 86 check, just trading down. And that's me. Anyway, it was an interesting game to analyze. I thought maybe we had a game submission, but it was another question. All right, Mr. Slowhand. Mr. So donated 400 bits earlier. Got to go to my mail. Mr. Slow. Mr. Slow, Mr. Coffee. Where's Mr. Coffee? Today? Is this a joke? Mr. Slow, where's your game? That's weird. I have nothing for Mr. Slow. Mr. Slow and grind. Forgot the grind part. I always do that. Here's the game for Thursday. Is that one of your old accounts, Mr. Slowhand? Maybe it has multiple Mr. Slows. Okay, what do we got here? Five plus three against El Rosador. I don't mean to spend like half an hour in every game, but I usually have trouble finding my, my pace for going over these games. The goal is to, to spend like 15 minutes, maybe like 15 minutes per game. I don't mean to spend like half an hour on, on each game. I have a little trouble getting getting started when we when we start the stream. Okay, so take take knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, bishop e3. I am out of book. I don't think bishop e3 is a normal move. You only have one name. Guys, welcome to my stream, International Master William Pascal. This variation is, um, I don't know, the only person on our stream that plays this is, is, uh, what was his name? More wah. But, um, sometimes black uses this system to play the Sveshnikov. Usually white will go knight b5, and then on d6, bishop f4, e5, we, we have a backdoor move order to the Sveshnikov. It's kind of funny because the Sveshnikov can end up with the same positions played on a different move number. Bob, one for every year of Sladgy's short life. It is short, and I hope it isn't too short by the end. If that made any sense. I hope it's a lot longer before it's it's over. Thanks, Bob. Um, thanks for subscribing, man. We've got a game with Mr. Slow here with Bishop E3. The knight b5 is uh, is d6, or black can play also bishop b4. I also played, um, I guess, g3. 
I'm not sure if that's considered great for white. But this move looks highly unusual, highly toxic. There's also bishop e2. This is an interesting gambit line. Bishop e2, bishop e4, castles, and sack a pawn. Bob sack a ponda. What do you guys think of this line? Interesting gambit line. Queen d3. I kind of like this. White sacrifices a pawn for the two bishops and some attacking chances. Bob and Juicebox was in the same stream. That could be trouble. Behave yourself, boys. This is, um, I'm not really qualified. My teacher's license, I'm not sure it, it expands to special needs troublemakers. All right, bishop takes c3. Castles, yeah, I didn't want to talk about this. I want to talk about knight c6, bishop e3. So the problem is black goes bishop e4 here, Mr. Slow. And how do you protect your e4 pawn? Sanctioned. Yeah, I didn't get my FIDE coaching license yet. They probably cost like 100 euros or something. I'm not an official FIDE trainer. I don't believe in corrupt organizations, but whatever. Bishop e3, bishop e4. Bishop e3, bishop b4, yes, this is best. Now what are you gonna do about e4? I have a friend who played this, International Master Solancy. Wow, there's even a Spassky game. You know you're in good shape, Mr. Sohan, when Johnny Hector's playing what you play. You know it's sound. When you go through the games of the variation in question and Johnny's in the list. Here's Johnny. I'm thinking, you know, this is an interesting move. I guess f3 is just really bad because you're getting blasted with d5. This is like you don't even know what you're doing if you play that. So it looks like your move is the only attempt, bishop d3. I mentioned my friend Emil Solansky, and I think he's played this before. But it's I always I was very skeptical that this is okay for white. It just doesn't seem 100% right. So d5, your opponent plays exactly what he's supposed to play. No, I mean, I don't think FIDE needs to exist. Actually, how much does it cost to rate tournaments, you know? They just have some nerd in an office punching buttons and calculating stuff. One guy could, like, rate all the FIDE's tournaments and get paid, you know, like one person salary it's totally corrupt Bob what chess site is this you know what chess site you're on right we don't because Lee chess doesn't have robots um watching their chess streamers that's why i don't have 14,000 viewers there are no lee chess bots like watching my stream d5 knight takes c6 here You've got to get out of there immediately. So, and if you allow bishop takes, pawn takes e4, it seems like a tempo down. Well, you may not like bishop d3, but I don't think you have a better move. You could play knight takes c6 right away. That's really 
It's not the question of bishop d3, really, the whole setup, maybe, is faulty. Well, I don't know if Lee Chess is against bots, but they're not going to pay for, for bots. They don't have any interest in, in creating, you know, robots to watch streamers so they make their site. They don't have the money to do that. It's like an investment. I don't think you need actual viewers to have viewer farms, Bob. Bishop d3, d5. Here, here. I don't like this. But it's playable, I guess. So Mr. Slow is deep in the in the, the analysis of this. It looks a little like the the normal sort of Paulson lines. It makes sense though. This has got to be the best play. If this variation works at all. It looks like this is possible too. Your other option. Now which way does black recapture here? Yeah, the Maya 9 bot might be interesting, Kakatiri. Speaking of chess playing bots. I was talking about like bot viewers on, on streams. But in, in terms of, of, yeah, playing the Maya 9 bot might be an interesting thing to try, even for the, for the stream. That's a good suggestion. The Maya bots, there's like three bots that play sort of human-like at different levels, like 1100, 1500, and 1900. And I guess the Maya nine bot is like a 1900 that would be the more interesting one for me um cool idea now which way would black take back back here i mean this is more correct like from the pawn structure standpoint but this way i found is really interesting if black is is playing for more because sometimes there's this d5 pawn your bishop is open So I have to agree with Mr. Slow. I don't like the variation, but I think this is best here. Queen g4, and now take. Shosh Arpad, who I've played. Um, yeah, this, this move is highly, alarms are going off in my brain. Beep, 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 beep. Like dark square weakness. Hello, robot says dark square weakness is serious. Yeah, this is not a move you want to make. I mean, but I guess, who is your opponent here? El Rastador. You know, it's tough to play Bishop F8 unless you're like Petrosian or something. For the average chess player, you're like, I can't play that. I'm undeveloping my pieces. This is like a Grandmaster. You've seen Petrosian do it in like the French defense and stuff. This is actually similar to a French defense. But that's a tough move for... A player under 2,500 to play. And they're all Grandmasters. Ieskas, Hansen, Wienance, Henkin. Exactly. Well, I mean, this structure, any kind of Sicilian with E6 is kind of related. And obviously the idea of Queen G4 is related to the French winnower. So it looks like after this, it's going downhill on the dark squares. And he can try to take that pawn on E5... But you've got queen g7, knight d3 check, pawn, pawn takes, and then black is, uh, black's in real bad way. Because at the end of the day, I guess, here, 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 without analyzing anything, just, just saying, this is a story, this is the story of two little bishops. It's a chess bedtime story. <laughs> The bishop that was good and the bishop that was bad. The good bishop, you know, it's like that. The difference between these bishops is momentous. It just decides the game immediately. Ops color bishop positions are all about attacking. And white is just 
just winning. Without going through concrete variations, we just say white is winning, period, end of story. Even though material is equal, we don't need, you know, we're good enough players, we don't need to even see anymore. This is over. I don't care if black plays this, rook f8, whatever, you know, everything loses for sure. You can't give up your dark square bishop. So that's the positional point here. You can't give up your dark square bishop. So this move is literally forced. The only other possibility is like queen a5, I guess. There's a very old Gustafsson game from 1997. For those of you who refuse to retreat, I guess queen a5 is playable. Yeah, rook of 8 just lost immediately. So that variation was over. But this, this might work, you know. I don't know, maybe I would just castle here, right? And the problem is, like, black can never castle. He's immediately lost after bishop h6. So, what's he going to do? So, it's like castles. Man, I mean, even if you take here... Okay, you can take here, because queen g7, bishop e5, saves him. But let's say take, take... Actually, could you do this? Could you take, take, and take? And then on this line, you have queen takes here. Could this be a way that black could potentially survive? I wouldn't want to like play Spassky with this position with black, you know. I'll pass on on Boris. I hope Boris is doing all right, by the way. One of the last living world champions. But all right, yeah, so giving up the dark square bishop is, is not, not something we can do. I wonder if anybody else played bishop f8 on the next move, like, oh, sorry, I was kidding around, I'll play bishop f8. They can play g6 here. So the early Gustafsson, but also having the sense to keep his dark square bishop. And now this pawn is a little bit weak. This looks like it's it's playable. Yeah, after castles, this is this is anything giving up the dark square bishop looks really bad. Take take here, like you're suggesting, looks strong. And then grab this and it's over. Yeah, it's over. You can't give up the dark square bishop. So that's what Rossador did. He ended up doing like takes, takes, knight takes e5. Okay, there is one other variation we didn't mention, knight g6, but that just gets captured. You can defend the rook momentarily. So he's basically toast here. But Mr. Slohan didn't take on h8 with check. Oh no, he's in check, duh. You mean you play by the rules? You didn't try to move twice, like when you're in check? All right, takes here, rook f8, yeah, this exactly. Also bishop h6. It doesn't matter. Um, I guess it's better than bishop h6 because it cuts out queen e7. It's a whole rook and nothing but the rook. So help you God. Oof. All right, anyway. This is not even close. It's just too much material. There's no way. You're, you're not surviving this, sir. And that's what happened. End of story. Game over. But the positional lesson was important. Now, Ross Dorn knows. Never give up your dark square bishop. Are there birds in the rooks? What do you mean? And for your entertainment, Astro Bates submitted a game. Wait, where is it? He invited you to ARG. ARG, the Stafford Gambit. 
Where is the game? Astro Bee versus Elephant. Elephant Flash. Speaking of Flash, whatever happened to Infinite Flash Chess? I think our stream doesn't doesn't take place at the right time for him to watch. Wow, record setting like CPL here. We're gonna try not to look at that. Speaking of elephants, rooks are elephants. Knight of three, knight c six. Thank you for not submitting a Stafford Gambit. I think I started to hate that as much as the London system. I'm going to be like Ro Eric Rosen's <laughs> number one promoter soon. He just like patently teaches people to play a bad opening. All right, Bishop C4. Astro Bates is killing the Stafford Gambit. He could give classes on it. So Bishop C4, Bishop C5, C3, Knight F6. Excellent. D4. And now... We're going to teach Astrobate the Dubov. What do you guys think? We should teach him the Dubov. Astrobate. E takes d4, b4. Astrobate loves to play b4. He loves to play um, the Joko Piano with white. You guys all saw this game against, against Karyakin. Or I assume like most people here. The devastation of Dubov Karyakin with b4. After b4, bishop e6, e5, Karyakin played knight e4 against Dubov. But I think that's his mistake, honestly. Leaving this d5 totally uncovered. This variation, it seems to take a lot more of the steam out of the whole gambit thing. I mean, it's easy to say that in hindsight. That game was played in the Russian Super Final. The year, the game of the year. It's already, you know, last year or whatever. Um, but, no. Nah. Astor, but you can try B4, the Dubov gambit. So we've got instead... Wow, he played castles. I don't even know what this is called. Okay, so it's a Scotch Gambit by transposition. Dude, Astro Bates never played the Scotch Gambit that I can recall. Not a lot of people play the Joko Piano and then transpose the Scotch Gambit. If they wanted to play the Scotch Gambit, they would just play the Scotch Gambit, you know? It's kind of weird to get into the Scotch Gambit by transposition. So Astrobate, like, of, co of course, main line is pawn takes, bishop b4. Astrobate, do you know the Muller attack? Knight c3, knight e4, castles, bishop takes c3, d5. We should do a stream where I analyze, like, games from 500 mastery games with chess. This is chapter one. Um, all right. Chapter two. You know, Gingy Ash really used to recommend this variation with Bishop D two, but I mean, this is insipid for White. There's no dynamism here. I don't know how he could recommend that. Like honestly, this is just just lifeless for White. I used to watch him play this in Blitz, and I don't get it. Anyway, castles. All right, and I don't know much about this line. Someone on sound. Oh, this is another, um, wait, is this another one of those sort of Eric Rosen gambits or something? No, the other guy, Jonathan Schrantz. Isn't this one of Schrantz's things? Is that it? Another correct trainer. Knight takes e4. What's happening on knight takes e4? 
CD4, D5. Yeah, this is this is more garbage. Could King F1 be played in the, in the Joko? Maybe. Um, that's better in the Evans, though. What is this called? I thought this was that other thing. Isn't this the Jonathan Schrantz? Dubious Gambit or whatever? I wish someone on sound was here to verify. Yeah, he plays a Scotch Gambit. Some trashy Scotch Gambit. But I thought it had a different name. Here it says the Walbrot Baird Gambit. Um, it seems like you have to take on E4 now. I guess you could take here. That seems kind of greedy. Yeah, Astrobate has three opponents under 1,500 who played the Safford Gambit against him, like, this week. Every, like, a little, like, nine-year-old kid thinks the Stafford Gambit is, is a good way to play with black. That's great. If you taught your kids to do that, they would all, like, lose their Scholastic tournament games. After ten moves, Astrobate has, like, two central pawns and a clear winning position. Against the average opponent. That's a great Gambit. Um... Knight takes e4, I guess. So, cd4, d5, and I don't know, bishop e5, maybe. Something like this. Someone on sound did this against me in a correspondence game. Something very similar to this. It just seems ridiculous for white. Anyways, so instead his opponent took the pawn. This is dangerous. Now knight takes. You can also play e5. What happens here? This is good for black as well, I guess. So you might as well just take the pawn. This feels like a Danish or something. No, okay, you have some compensation here. White is down a pawn. It's a little like the Smith Mora. You have some tricks. You have positional play, half open file. I mean, in a practical game, I wouldn't want to play it with white, but again, just like the Smith Mora, it seems like it's it's playable. E5, D5, or Bishop G5. Maybe the Bishop G5 type of thing here. Can we do that? You know, the old P sacrifice? We hope that black plays H6 and and then we let him go G5 and just chop. Something along these lines. I mean, is this is this realistic for white to sack a piece? I guess you wouldn't have to. Just go here. Black probably shouldn't play G5. But Astrobe, what about Bishop G5? That's a favorite move of yours. It seems difficult to play black, and there's no time to play bishop e7, or what? I like bishop e7. Before it's too late, come to your senses. If here, that's the question. This looks like this fishing pole. It's totally someone on sound style. But Astrobe played e5, and black played this. Speaking of fishing poles. What about d5? Is this nothing? If we take... We're just giving... A pawn back to get developed but white ass like a space advantage I know that d5 is not sufficiently protected but black has an extra pawn to give back if necessary so here bishop f4 in one go 
This is perfectly logical. Black could still play d6. Black needs to break out before it's too late. He does. Nice job. It looks like someone on sound is playing white against me or something. White still has compensation. And now you play bishop g5, which is kind of weird. So, Astrobate, you can just take. Have faith. Is white better after d5? It's an interesting question. I would assume white is still better, but he's he's kind of on the verge of overextending. You know, there is there is a a school of thought that would say this pawn is is like a liability, as much as as it is a strength. I don't know if it's strong or overextended. Way has to take this pawn, I suppose. You could play it in a gambit style, I guess. But again, this pawn is getting more and more sketchy by the moment. I feel like white has to take the pawn. We trade pieces, and then white takes the pawn. You could also take with the queen. It doesn't look very threatening, though. The oracle says it's equal. Approximately equal after d5. But the computer prefers not taking it. Now that's interesting. Or this, like the chaos variation. But again, you know, if, if queens get traded, black's going to be out of the woods. Pretty safe. I think as long as the queens come off the board, white is not going to have any serious threats. So can you keep the queens on the board? That's the question. This is a totally unplayed variation. The computer wants to play queen a4. What did I say? Keep the queens off the, on the board. The minute you trade queens here, the black king is safe and he's completely well. But I suppose that this still being on the board, that's interesting. So bishop e6, this is just crazy. This is crazy. Queen b5. <laughs> yeah, totally crazy position if the queen gets over here. So that's interesting, you know. Never been played before. In this level, anyway. At master level. The only game was d6, it looks like. If we check on chess base or something, there's going to be a lot of games. Notice... After d6, everybody played bishop g5. How weird is that? Right? But after castles, there's no games. But why not bishop g5? That's still good. So e5 for masturbate. Maybe e5 is pushing it too much. Bishop f4, d6. And then you played this, and that's not a problem. Actually, Astrobate's opponent played really well, I thought, this opening. Queen d7. Played the opening, like, excellently. And Astrobate just lost his mind. He's like, here, have a pawn. So, I would have played pawn takes pawn. And then, black can capture either way. It's kind of a tough one. Or we can do the Simon Williams sort of what do I want to call it? The Budapest Gambit Queen F6 style move. That looks dubious. But it's possible. You feel like white made decisions against fundamentals. That's the argument against E5. You mean queen a4 and queen b5? No, you're talking about Astrobate's e5. May have been overextending. Juice box. Slightly, but I still think he's fine. After this, there's like positional compensation, for example, here. Even if you go into an endgame, I mean, this pawn is so bad. I've had similar games in the Mora. Black's d6 pawn is so weak that he's probably not better. Truthfully. It's just gonna 
be enough compensation for white like this. Computer has it at dead equality. White is temporarily up a pawn, but the pawn is such a liability, you really can't keep it protected. Black has to just settle for an equal game. But Astrobate wanted blood, so he played this. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense to play bishop f4 and bishop g5. You wasted time. And then he just went nuts. So now you're down two pawns. There's this threat. It was all a cheapo. He said it before the stream. He planned it. It was a moment of zen. He's trying to tell us this was all a deeply planned thing. One idea is, is knight d8. Actually, this can get knocked out by that bishop, though. I was just speaking to Astrobate earlier about moving queen e2 and, and playing knight d1. Black has the same idea here of knight d8. Bishop h4, I mean, you just gambited two pawns and you're like maneuvering bishop h4. It's extremely slow. Now queen d3. There's a very subtle threat of knight g5. e5. Subtle again. You've got queen f5. And white is busted. Busto. White is busto. You definitely can't trade queens, so he played this. Self-preservation instinct. Asprey knows he can't play an endgame down two pawns. So he avoids the exchange of queens, and then he's just dead. He's dead. And then this last desperate gasp. Maybe black will take my knight. I mean, it's difficult to imagine how well Black's played this game, and he takes on g5 here. I guess he figures if he takes on g5, Astrobate will take with the bishop. I mean, this had to be the guy's thinking. With something like h takes g5, bishop takes g5, check, knight h6, and your queen's going to get exchanged. So when you go here, I have this, and it's not so bad. That must have been what he was thinking at the end of the day. But Astrobate surprises him. Not discover check, but knight takes g5. I don't think white even has a threat here, does he? Does white have a threat? Like, I seriously, I'm having trouble. Can I see a threat anywhere? There is literally no threat in the entire position. Because you always have knight h6. So what does he do? Like, knight f2 or something? I'm just trying to imagine, like, even this move... That's crazy, man. Knight f2. <laughs> Your queen is hanging. Discover checks. But bishop f2 can be met by queen takes, knight takes, guarding f2. And my head hurts. Black's up two pawns in this one. He's still clearly better. I guess pawn takes also. White has no threats after knight takes g5. But the guy played g6, losing control of h6. Unbelievable. The only move, one of the only moves that's possible to give white something. And now... If Astrobe plays this, check here, check here, where's our mate? We 
we don't have a mate. Check. Queen takes. Bishop h4 check. Queen is hanging on that diagonal. So now black has to play king f5. Are we having fun yet? It looks like even this is winning for black, maybe. I don't know. I, I guess it's not entirely safe with your king on f5. And I forgot what the material is. Black's up two pieces. I'm not sure if it's worth being up two pieces here. <laughs> but Astrobe got lucky. I mean, g6, knight f7 check. Rook f7. Oh. This is beautiful. That is a beautiful mate, man. But not a perfect game. The mod's on duty. I'm a mod. I'm on duty. But I'm, I'm busy. All right. Mod's on duty. Guys, welcome to the stream. That was a beautiful maid masturbate, but a lot to be taken away from that game. A lot of inaccuracy. Please don't beg me to follow you. I ban people for following, for begging me to join their teams on Lee Chess. I'll just block them and ban them immediately. Everybody's doing it. It's like, I never beg people. Sending spam. Join my Ponda team. All right, masturbate Princess Chess is up next. Looking for a mod. All right, princess. Welcome, guys. We're analyzing serious games here. Astrobate, nice try. Where's your, where's your chat? Got a short game to submit for this week if you have room. All right, rapid chess, princess chess versus tabor ik. In Hungarian tabor means like school. A tabor is a camp, actually, like a school camp. This is Princess Chess with the Princess Chess Arena playing the white bits. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight F6. Ugh. All right, the four knights can be spicy, though. Knight C3, Knight C6, Bishop B5. I don't have much love for the, for the four knights scotch. This seems like it's hopeless for white. People play that. We don't join other teams. I hate when people spam me these requests. They're like, I'll follow you if you join my team. All right, bishop e5, best move, bishop c5. That's an unusual line. Gennady Sagalchik played it against John Curdo at the US Open. I remember that. Bishop c5 is not a very common move. I guess it's not considered great. But no, no, I'm thinking of something else. What am I thinking of? It's weird. This is a transmission to the classical. Yeah, what am I thinking of? It's weird. I don't know now. This is just a classical Nims I'm the Roy Lopez. Classical um, Berlin classical. No, I'm getting it confused with something else. That's weird. I can't think of what it was. It must have been A six or something. So yeah, but still like not a variation that has a lot of positive results. I thought about playing this for black, but It seems like it has problems, theoretically. Of course, white doesn't have the option here for c3. That's a main variation. The other question is this. The problem with this variation, I guess it, it allows a lot of exchanges. I lost against Nefidov, who's been MIA for a long time on my stream. I remember Nefidov, I played with black, I think, in this line. 
th this th this allows a lot of exchanges of pieces typically 95 95 d4 and then there's c6 or a6 maybe not in this position though i'm thinking of different lines it's easy to con get confused and think of these lines like bishop c bishop b5 bishop c5 castles knight f6 and then knight takes c5 this is different because our knight's not on c3 i'm thinking of this line that i had with nefidav before with the knight on c3 i guess it's a little bit different bishop c5 castles d6 so you've got d4 here blam blam we need sound effects that's a good move good job way to not play passively yeah I mean he's not supposed to do that he's supposed to castle so d6 is unusual blam Blam, this is blam. Why is this blam sound effects? Because you force black to give up their strong point. It's so fundamental, you know? The better I get and the older I get, I'm always getting better. Even if my rating went down one point in the last 27 years, I'm underrated by at least two points. E takes D4, gives up the strong point. My fundamentals are getting stronger. Knight d4. So, wow, there's a Karawana game. Bashe versus Karawana. I like white. I love move 11. Thinking about this position in terms of pawn structure. Move 11, who's a master of tactics very good at calculation takes a view of the position in terms of king side majority but i mean i wonder move 11 if you want to talk about majorities right is does white have a king side majority technically yeah but princess just everybody needs to be a pawn thinking kind of player Pawns are the soul of chess. Move 11 is right to think about this. The pawn structure helps guide our plans. But I'm thinking move 11, technically speaking, it's not a king side majority. You know, as long as you have a D pawn. I have the larger island on the king side. But that's not the same as a king side majority, I guess. Technically, I don't have four pawns free against three pawns. So just food for thought. I don't know what you call it. We'll have to call up Hans Kmok. We can have, we can have some kind of um, seance or something and ask the Pawn Power and Chess, Princess Chess. That's your next book. That's why it's hard to break through because it's not a majority. No, but we have levers. We have the ability to play e5. We have the ability to crack him with, with f4, e5. We have, what else? We have the ability to put our bishop on d3, play e5, and open the diagonal against h7, theoretically, right? The more I teach chess, the more important the fundamentals, I realize how important they really are. This pawn means that white is better in this position. Everything is like second to that in importance. I don't know what the best plan is. I would assume with a space advantage, like white wouldn't necessarily want to trade pieces. But this pawn, it is our strength, but it's also a target on the E file later on. So we've got to be prepared, like when Black Castles and plays Rook E8, how are we going to protect that pawn? 
Are we going to play f3, for example? Probably not with this diagonal. I'm thinking, like, man, almost anything could happen here. Bishop takes c6, b takes c, knight a4. There's a problem with this line, though. Takes, takes, and c5. That's not good. Anyway, we don't want our knight on a4. This is what Vacher played, though. He played bishop takes c6. I like the knight on d4. It's a strong piece. Maybe bishop e3. Maybe he went here. No. Here's a cool move. Bishop f4. What did... Vacher played bishop e3, castles. And then the very quiet rookie won. It looks like white, you know, played very, very safely. Both sides. f3, rook b8, knight b3, bishop b6, takes. And the pawn diamond formed over here. I call this the ghost bishop on d7. It never seemed to have any purpose in life. And it's really not that easy to deal with. But black's still fairly solid. Um, so I don't know, Princess Chess, what you should do here. I honestly don't know. Should you take with a knight? Should you take with a bishop? Should you play another move? What did you do? You took with a knight. Black took with a bishop. So most people are going to take with a pawn here. Everybody did. Though your opponent's move is not absurd. Like, trading pieces is probably not that bad. The bottom line is that B takes gains a tempo. So most players were, were drawn to that. You know, there is there is a side of it that, like, you know, that was white's bad bishop, technically. You're kind of trading like your good bishop for white's bad bishop. But I guess with less space, any trades are pretty good for black here. Black's very solid. And now bishop g5. I normally hate this kind of move if there's a bishop on e7. I see a lot of people do that, like, reflexively. But obviously here it makes sense. I mean, you've got a serious pin. It's hard for black to get out of the pin h6 g5 is extremely weakening but the position is fairly simplified i wonder about queen e7 can black get out of the pin with one of these sort of queen maneuvers and you can't play f4 you have to play king h1 before you can move your f pawn. Yeah, queen e7 with the idea of queen e5 or queen e6 unpinning. Let's just for, for argument's sake, like king h1. Now if queen e5, we can play f4. So it's still it's still probably better for it's still probably better for white. Oh. It's not quite lethal. <laughs> Almost lethal. It's an idea. It doesn't look like lethal. Not yet. That can take this. It's a pawn sacrifice. 94. Compensation for material, but I'm not 100% sure. It does look, it does look promising, though. This is a pretty cool pawn sacrifice. Check this out, h6, bishop f6. Position only Bob could love. Yes, with the idea of queen f3. Slaggy versus Bob from last simul. Not very pretty black's pawn structure. That's a nice idea. And that's the point of why you don't trade off your strong point. This is why in the e45 openings, the strong point is so important. White can't physically play e5 if you if you don't trade off your strong point. Okay. The truth is that black should castle, I guess. 
Princess chess, you said like queen f3. All right, let's say castles queen f3. You can allow this exchange here. That's standard in the scotch and the scotch four knights. Like the double pawns is not the end of the world. So the way that black should do this, I guess, is castle first, avoiding this, this trick with e5. And then black's position is playable. Queen f3, whatever, okay. Bfd, queen e7. Now it's your turn. If you play queen f3, you block your f pawn. Do you really want to do that? You know, so I don't know. How much is white better after bg5? It goes positional. Nefidov style, knight a4. Schieberspieler would play this too. You got the micro advantage after bishop e6, knight b6, a b a b6. Bishops are stronger than knights. All right, anyway, let's take a look what happened in the game. Bishop g5, h6, and then the howler. This is a very, very risky move. I don't like it. I don't like g5. Not in this position. You know, it happens sometimes when black has a white square bishop on the board and a pawn on e5, I would like this a lot better. No white square bishop. We're putting another pawn on the dark squares. You have the the crushing e5 thing that Dr. Tripchance pointed out. Down the line, essentially, g5 is bad, but black's idea was to play h5. So, very well. You have e5 or h3 or h4, all of the above. H3, the pacifist of the three. What do you prefer? You went with e5. What happens if e5, h4? Pawn takes f6, pawn takes g3. e5, h4. Pawn takes f6, pawn takes g3. The black king isn't too safe, but then again, you don't have that much, you don't have that many pieces to attack black here. Are you sure this is good enough? White is considerably better only with 94. I'm not sure you played the right move here with, with e5. What about h4? Did you just say bishop takes h4 first? I kind of like h4. Am I crazy to like this? Black can go here. Ugh. I think I'm going to take this back. I don't like it anymore. I don't like knight g4. Okay, h3 is definitely possible. Turkey farm. Turkey farming. I don't know, I'm getting a little carried away here. I clearly e5 was a move. Okay, here. You were saying what h4 take on h4? Wow. That's crazy. Never entered my mind. So rook h4, pawn f6, queen f6. I mean, the black king could go here or here. But I'm not really sure. I mean, you have 94 in some lines. White should be better, but it may not be that simple. Yeah, computer doesn't think that white's better. Crazy. Man, it's amazing. The engine wants to play your move, my move, I'm sorry, h4, but I didn't like, um, no, it didn't. Knight a4, wow. Knight a4, who thought of that? 
That's crazy. The idea is to play this. Nice. Just when you didn't think you had a square for your bishop. I'll make a square. With bishop e5. If h4. That's a cool idea. For example. Black's play is, is somewhat unsound. I agree with e5 though. I'm going to turn off the engine. I like e5. And then black played this. So, the problem is now h4 isn't really a threat because you take his knight. You're just opening up position with the black king exposed in the center. Very fundamental. Now this move looks pretty tasty, actually. Because you have the new you have a new target on d6. Make it red. Make it red. Control Alt. How do I make it red? Shift. Nothing's working there. All right, that's the weak point. This looks really crushing, actually. So you play Queen E two check. My fear with this move is that. You may actually force black to go to a better, safer location, but I guess you have rook d1, which isn't bad either. Oh, queen e7, I missed that. Yikes. You traded queens here. Oh my god. I didn't want to trade queens, Princess Chess. That's the last resort. His king is not as safe as ours, and he's broken all sorts of principles. So avoiding the exchange of queens seems intuitive. I didn't even consider queen e7. Of course, it's a logical move. I guess Princess Chess was a little nervous about this counterattack over here, but... She goes into a better ending with rook ae1. You could play a lot of moves in this position. I mean, queen f3, like what is black doing after that? It's difficult to say. What's black gonna do, castle king side, h4? Castle queen side, rook c8? What is black's move in this position? I don't see a place for the black king to go where it's gonna be safe. If you castle king side, I guess you just get h 3 Maybe there would be some way black could survive that, like castles, h3, knight f6, but it looks horrendous. Just take a pawn here. So fundamentally, you never trade queens when, you know, the opponent's king is less safe than yours. That's the general rule. Queen a6 is a little bit off sides for me. I, I don't know. I like this better. If you have to have to attack c6, I would do this. He can play this, but that's... Slightly dangerous, I would say. There's some nice tactical ideas here with bishop d6, maybe. Possible sacrifices of bishop d6 and rook d6. Looks like a lot of stuff. Winning position for white if king d7. So the strongest move for white is queen f3. Not change his mind. It's right up there though. Yeah. You shouldn't allow this exchange. Now it looks like the best you're going to do is maybe pick off a pawn somewhere. You've got a threat of 94 and this and this. K 
Castles H3. If black dared to castle, I assume they're lost as well. Castles. Sorry. I don't know what we were talking about. What were we talking about? When were we talking about castles? In what position did we say castles for black? I don't remember. Anyway, let's finish it up. Knight g4, takes, takes here, check. Rookie 7, rookie 1, take, take here, knight e4. This is going to devastate black positionally. Is h4 a thing? Yeah, well, it's a thing, but it's like knight c5 check takes, rook d1 check, king c8, and prayer to God. For black here, um, luckily, you know, he's not losing immediately. This seems like a reasonable try. Black's best chance would have been something like this. Though objectively, he's probably losing. It's not that easy. Here, for example, you could pin white with like rook d8, I guess. But I suspect that ultimately, like black's pawn weaknesses should be a problem in almost any endgame. So here, bishop d4, that's slow. It may, you know, makes you wonder should you take the time to play c3 here? I guess not. Black just sorry, black just um almost spilled my my water. Black just played what? Black just lost after d5 hanging the rook. But um that's kind of a weird move. Bishop b2, knight f7. What's wrong with c3? C3, C3PO. I just want to preserve all my pawns. If possible. Didn't I'm greedy, I don't want to give him B2. This is a strong attack too. You're you're basically winning. But I'm not sure if knight g5 is, is the greatest. It looks like you're still clearly clearly better pretty much anything. But it was a good fundamental game by Princess. So Black just simply hung a rook. And resign. Alright guys, Sumaher is next. Next game on the list, Sumaher. In the inbox. Everybody, we're going to be back tomorrow with Blitz. There was no, no Blitz stream on Wednesdays now, so we're doing Mondays and Wednesdays. Faster Blitz tomorrow, 5 plus, five plus 3. Against all challengers, be here 11 a.m. for the clickbait. I specialize in clickbait. Going for 5,000 in puzzles. Tomorrow morning, going for the 5,000 puzzles. $20,000 challenge. Seriously, real chess. Be here tomorrow. Um, right, Sumahair. Where are you? Inbox. There it is. Thanks. All right. He said, here's a game for analysis. It was eight player simul. Can't decide if this game is better than the miniature I played against Aldisto. Which is which? You lost against Aldisto? No, he beat Aldisto. Wait, when was that? Wait, Aldisto was 8-1 and one on Tuesday, and he only lost against me, so this must be from a previous one. Maybe the week before. What's the time control? I don't think Aldisto is here. You had a crushing win versus Bombist. Good old Bombist. He hasn't been on my stream in a while. Alright. He was never really... 
involved in my stream except for the tournaments on Tuesdays. Some, I think, master strength player from, from Ukraine. Sometimes he played like he was FM strength. You know, other times not so great, but, but still always tough. Turkey farm. The best way to beat Aldisto is to take him out in the opening. All right, c4, e6, knight c3, d5, knight f3, and then c6. And that seems weird. You may have seen it. Leech has come up with Puzzle Storm. No, we didn't see it. There's like five people streaming Puzzle Storm. Honestly, I was thinking today, all due respect, it's great that they have a puzzle thing, and I think it's funny and all that, but. The only thing more boring than doing puzzles is watching somebody else do do chess puzzles. That's my that's my think about it, honestly. Like I don't know. It's like watching golf or something. Seriously. Aldisto is a weird player because He's playing the wing gambit against the Sicilian. He plays like this weird offbeat system against the English. But he plays the semi-slav with black. You know like the semi-slav is probably, even though it has a passive starting position that looks like the Kali system, this is probably the sharpest opening against d4, if you think about it. You take that personally. My bread maker is designing gold courses in PGA. No way. But that's different. You know, that's different. You're not watching golf. You're you're playing golf. You're playing, you know, even playing golf is cool. I like playing golf. I imagine playing golf like online sports golf is is fun. But watching golf, do you watch golf? Do even golfers watch golf? Like seriously? I've never been a puzzle person, though I think it's it's good to some degree for training. But I just I can't imagine like I'm gonna stream it and then watch these guys like do eighty puzzles real fast. Like, are you seriously? Are you absorbing that? Is that even interesting? Um Alright. So c6, I guess it's right up there with bullet chess. But black now played c6 and white played queen c2. This is an interesting move. However, um, it reminds me of the fact that like, I used to play the Geller Gambit with d4, d5, c4. In a normal Slav, with like takes, e4, b5, and queen c2. This is a rarely played line that Spassky played. I've been playing this for a long time, but never like against really strong players. Sometimes I'll just... I also... I also like to play a lot of... Um, actually, speaking of the triangle, for example, I like to play a lot of pawn triangle gambit lines with e4 over the years this is also not really well respected variation but this queen c2 is kind of interesting bjock you're right here move 11 do you like golf could be a golf guy all right queen c2 secret golf pro i lived like right next to a golf course well for a while I um I remember I got in this huge fight with one of the golf pros. I have bitterness toward toward golf courses now. Queen C two I'm not gonna tell my story. You've taken many golf courses. Alright, Queen C two This is a cool move but takes and you caught him not not knowing what to do 
He can transpose to the Baron, though. I mean, he's kind of hoping you play e3 and transpose to a normal line, like bishop d6, e3, knight on bd7, okay. Whatever, it's Karpov. Karpov, whatever. But queen c2 is the problem is you're also going to play e4 in some lines. Golflecture.com. I think he's pulling my leg. Chessmurf just gifted a tier 1 sub to Thrandwill. Move 11, are you serious? Is there really a golflecture.com? I'm very gullible. Fishing, you know, watching fishing is, I think, more interesting than golf. Um, definitely down, I'm more down with fishing. My son has a VR fishing game, which is pretty cool. We'll have to get VR golf. Queen C2. Then I can start streaming VR fishing for the stream when chess starts to run out of support. What would you guys think about a VR fishing stream? If I get desperate, I don't have enough followers. We can throw that out there. I thought about doing like a chess match on some video game like Frog, Amazing Frog, playing chess. Queen C2, all right. I like Queen C2, you confuse the systematic Aldisto out of his book and he doesn't take here. So taking here is critical. What are you gonna do seriously after this? You have to play E4. So you're, you're in, um, yeah, you're in the in the Spassky Gambit, that's all. You're basically going to have to transpose to some kind of Spassky Geller, Geller Gambit thing. I've played this, and I don't think it's good enough, honestly. You don't really have enough battle chess. You don't have enough, quite enough compensation. There's Korchnoi, for example, 1991. Yeah, this is your game. He doesn't play the critical move, which is grabbing the pawn. He tried to get you to transpose, but you play bishop g5. The other problem is e4. It looks like Mamadova versus Mamadurova. Okay, whatever. D takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, and white is slightly better. But that could also be a semi-slav transposition. You might save a tempo, though. There are lines where white goes like e3, e4 in two moves. I wonder. Don't worry, we're getting off topic a lot. It's not easy to catch fish when you go fishing <laughs> in general. It depends on where you go. I'm, I'm, I don't do a lot of freshwater fishing. Bishop g5 is is good. Knight on bd7. And he plays queen e7. So that is weird. Are you kidding me? You have some sort of tactic down this line? You have knight b5? No. I don't see how you have some miniature here. Wow, that's crazy. Oh my god, I've never seen anything like this. So he walked right into knight d5? I know you're Sumaher. I am Sumaher. Hi. We know you are. cd5, ed5, and then you had knight d5. That's funny. So the, the Cambridge Springs trick doesn't work. Check here. You have king move. Or knight d2. That's funny. So you missed that. And basically you just got an exchange variation that looks okay for black. 
he did something similar against me. You know, come to think about it. I think that Aldisto also played some weird sort of bishop d6 against me in the exchange queen's gambit in the not so distant past. It's very unusual. But he could get away with something here if you're not careful. But this is really crazy. I mean, bishop g4. What if he just makes a routine move? Castle. This is something similar to what I had. Bishop d3, maybe h6, bishop h4. And I guess white is slightly better. I remember this this coffee house player who used to play this way in Blitz against me in Harvard Square like 25 years ago, Vlad. Vlad would use like two curse words in one in one word. He would combine like two of them into one word. <laughs> I would can't repeat what he would say on the stream, but it's kind of funny. He had broken English. Would just spew a lot of curse words. Bishop h4, and white is clearly better. But this is crazy, developing the queen's bishop first. Bishop d3. Okay, this is reasonable. You still have tactics with knight d5, but there's no mate. <laughs> Queen c8 is not mate. Could you do that? Like knight d5, pawn d5, check. Queen d8 and then take on b7? Is that a thing? It probably doesn't quite work, I would assume. It's a little over the top. You might want to get castled. The computer suggests this is a wicked move. Knight h4 to f5. <laughs> Hello. That's why you don't put bishop on d6 in the exchange queen's gambit. Among other things. I mean, obviously this pin is a problem. He would have to play bishop g6. And I guess knight f5, bishop f5, bishop f5 with clear advantage to white. And those are some nice bishops. Black is in a lot of trouble strategically in the long run. Bishop g4 is dubious. Anatoly Lang did something like that against me. Just randomly played his bishop to g4 in an exchange variation. And that's not normal to do that. But as I said, the only way to get to the best way to get him is in the opening. So h3 was a weird move. You're like hesitating, maybe going to castle queenside and attack him with g4. I see. He goes here. And then you played this. I think you have to castle queenside if you want to get anything. Well, I guess it's risky. I don't know. It's weird. You could castle kingside. But I don't think you objectively have much. Castle's queenside is dangerous, but living, you know, crossing the street is dangerous too. I don't mind it so much here. Normally, it's risky, but, you know, he's going to have to castle kingside. Then you can go. You can go with your pawns on the other side pretty fast here. Well, I don't think he has any real... Well, it could be dangerous, you know, eventually it's dangerous. You're right. You're probably right, Turkey Farm. I guess I'm talking more in general terms in the Queen's Gambit Exchange Variation. Usually it's kind of dangerous. Black's position here isn't that... He isn't that well developed. But ultimately, you know, your king is going to be attacked on the queen side. So you decide to just wait. Maybe rook b1 is another move where you go for a minority attack like b4. You keep looking at this tactic. I want this to work so bad. I just said that. Oh no. You played e4. Rook c1 and then e4. How does that work, master? Yeah, 
It doesn't make any sense. If you want to play e4, you play for e4, but I don't see how rook c1 is connected to playing for e4. If you castle, maybe you can come with e4. But in this position, you're not really prepared to play e4. Your king is still here on e1. So that seems like a mistake. He takes, and you castle. Neat trick. Wow. Pretty crazy trick, and he's going to go rook e1 and win the, win the queen on the e-file. And so now black, I guess, should make a sensible move. He can take, but this, this gives up the queen, right? This looks super dangerous for black. That's a pretty creative idea by white. I had no idea what you were doing, and he didn't either. I mean, this was a surprise. And now what should black do? Castle king side? Castle king side. I guess, what do you do? Rook e1? And he can get out of the pin with something like queen e6, probably. But objectively, his position is pretty solid. You'll end up with an Isolani. You know, how do you take this pawn? I think this is a little problematic. Queen e6 on your a2 pawn. Now you're sorry that you played rook. <laughs> you're sorry that you played rook, rook c1, because otherwise that would be protected. Knight e4, knight e4, rook e4, and why can't he take this pawn? There's some kind of insane computer tactic. Wow. D5. <laughs> I can't say I would have seen that, honestly. That is a crazy move. If you take with the pawn, rook a4 traps your queen. If you take with the queen, your bishop ends up dropping because white has like rook d1, queen c5, rook c4, and the bishop drops on d6. So black can't take it either way. That's a really sick move. But he's paying the price for his king, you know, being in the center for so long. He played this. And now knight e4, and he's losing his queen if he takes. So he played this. And now you just have a good position. I mean, at the very least, like knight g3, no, that doesn't work. I guess rook e1. Yeah, that's an amazing tactic. And suddenly black's just stuck. Stuck is the word. And it's over. Aldisto does this a lot. He doesn't like, he likes to not castle and attack on the H file. He does that in the Sicilian against the English. Um, but you caught him here. Principally like leaving his king in the center too long. So E4 was an exceptional move. Uh, I gotta give you credit for that. I really didn't understand it. But you have takes and castles. Now black has to be super, super safe. What if this? Okay, we didn't mention this, but he doesn't have to sack his queen. He can play here. I assume this was good for you. Surprisingly, the computer says it's okay for black. That's hard to believe. My god, look at this line. Now I assume, like, bishop c5 and white is, like, crushing actually anything. You can't play bishop c5. You have to take this. Wow. It's pretty amazing that white isn't winning by force in this position. I would assume I was a dead man if I got this far. But black can defend like Max Uva. Bishop f4, knight d7. No problem. But I mean, that's scary. All right, next game, Antoni. The Antoni. Yeah. Good job. Uh-oh. Serious game again. 
Subscriber analysis game. All right, a somewhat different approach to the one you employ, but a move knight on bd2 that I suggested to you many times. Wow. All right, it's a bogo bogus Indian. We're gonna grab this, put it in, put it into analysis board. Copy and paste. Yes, import, make a study, hello little study. Maybe that's the best way to get new followers. I'll just create like random studies, create study. Normally I make my studies private. Create public studies on the Stafford Gambit, <sighs> please. Create study, bang whatever all right this is n tony versus somebody no this is gelfand korchnoi korchnoi gelfand or, or gelfand korchnoi right check yeah that's this knight fd2 Noah Siegel. I played that kid. I remember when my friend David Vigorito lost against. It was a different kid. Noah Siegel. <clears throat> I think I beat that guy. Can't remember. He's one of those masters who quit chess <laughs> to get a real job somewhere. He didn't want to be unemployed for all of his life. So knight fd2. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. <laughs> you know what? You got to take, you got to be skeptical when you see stuff like this. Maybe he really played this against Jinji, but maybe it was just a moron transcribing the moves. Does it make sense after that? Or could you even tell? Let's see. I'm just curious now. Now you've piqued my curiosity. Nine out of ten like weird moves are just transcribed by morons. Knight fd2, b6, bishop d2. Sorry, a3, bishop takes d2, check. Bishop takes d2. So now we know. Is this game transcribed by a moron? We'll never know. Now we never know. White played knight two. You see, that makes me suspicious, but that makes me suspicious. Come on. Would white really play knight d2 here if his knight was on f was with his knight on b1? Would white play f3? And then reserve this knight for something like c3? I'm suspicious. You get a chance to play a Grandmaster and you play that absurd move. And that guy wasn't a joker. He seemed like a serious kid. I'm I'm paranoid by nature. Man, there's also a bishop h5 check in this position. That looks kind of interesting. No, I suspect that's a transcription error. Sorry to disappoint you, move 11. Knight on BD2. All right, this is Antony's game. We've got B6. And move 11 was gonna play it in his next game. He's like, but, but it was played. All right, B6, A3. Of course it's possible. But that, that position doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Bishop takes D2. What kind of moron would transcribe Knight FD2 was the move there, you know? Bishop takes d2 check, queen d2. I mean, the problem here, let's go back a little. Knight bd2, I played d5. Against this knight on d2. The problem with that line is that white has queen a4 check and you have to put your knight on c6. 
But it's not that bad. Both sides have misplaced pieces now. Queen on a4 and knight on c6 for black. It's a trade-off. You have a stupid queen and I have a stupid knight. Um, but b6 is like the main line. I also played uh, against Erdos, this line which is popular now. Castles, a3, bishop e7. But I mean, this is something you don't play against like a stronger player. For sure, which I shouldn't have played against Victor, but I wasn't prepared for him to play it. This is very risky for black. You know, no space, and white as the center. Really no compensation for, for um, ooh, Magnus is playing this. Magnus is a copier. He usually just steals other people's ideas rather than create theory himself. Um, it's much easier to just borrow other people's theory. I think the first person I saw this was probably well before that 2016 game. Alright. B6, although there's nothing new. Giving up the dark score, bishop, queen d2. Bishop d2 is the other line. That's the idea like Noah Siegel used with bishop g5. The question is where you're going to put your bishop. If you take with the queen, you're putting it on b2. And the idea is like what, what Roman did in that game. He's trying to... Roman was what, black, sorry. What Noah Siegel was trying to do in that game was like open the long diagonal. So eventually he played d5 to try to even sack a pawn. There's a lot of very dangerous pawn sacks. Just d5, giving up the pawn to open the long diagonal can be fatal for black in certain circumstances. Bishop e7, e3, castle. Mihai Suba in his book, Modern Chess, no, what's it called? Um, Dynamic Chess Strategy. He has a game or two in this type of line where he played with white. Very impressive. A great, uh, a what? A great concept for amateurs to internalize. Well, what you really need to internalize is that this bishop that sucks and it's hemmed in by all of its pawns can transform into like a monster that's dominating the entire board from b2 if it goes right. Actually, I have a game against a beginner which doesn't need analysis with final position. Okay, feel free to share it. So a5 here. This looks standard. Maybe for a future game, we can analyze Boris Gelfand versus Michael Adams. Adams, honestly, dude, one of the best, like, Nimzo style players I can think of. Nimzo Bogo repertoire. That guy is good. Um, D6, but the plan will still probably be 94 in a lot of positions. A5, preempting white on the queen side. I mean, I don't know. It seems like that weakens black black's position slightly. And I'm not sure, you know, you gain that much from A5. Off to dreamland. Juicebox wizard, pleasant dreams. Sometimes white plays b4, sometimes white plays b3. Here, obviously, b3. Now d6? No. Wow. So that's the standard plan. Sort of Nimzovichian, d6, knight on d7, knight e4, f5, classic Nimzovich. This is something different. It's interesting. So Korchnay plays a5, and then he plays d5. And my fear, my fear for black ultimately would be like the dark square bishop for white becoming a strong piece. But this pawn is blocked. He's been unable to play b4. Let's see what happens here. 
Black's bishop is also blocked. So that's the thing about this, this game. All right. Let's look at the opening explorer. There's only 14 games at master level. Gelfand Korchnoi, some recent ones. I will mention one thing. In similar positions where this happens, like c5, I've seen like Yasser Sarawan play things like pawn takes pawn, and then pawn takes pawn. If your pawn is on b4, you can play b5 and get this like crushing outside pass pawn. By playing a5, it seems like black has thought this through. You know, he didn't want white to get in b4 and get that strong pawn pushed up to like b5. So a5 was somehow very connected to black's play here. It's not just a random space grabbing move. He concretely didn't want white to have essentially like protected pass pawn getting up to b5. So white in this position, there's 10 games. Nobody took on c5 here. Obviously you've also got knight takes c5 hitting b3. That might be a move too. Though normally I think you would take with the pawn. But it's funny that no one played this move. Zero games with d takes c5. I mean, clearly you're opening your bishop for the long diagonal. Turkey farm. It looks like two bishops will be favored in the next few moves. Yeah, this is like a classical Nimzo. Obviously, taking on c5 is a valid. It's a valid move. I'm not even sure which way Black should play it. Is it is it so bad to take like this? That would be my default move, honestly, for White. The computer doesn't like it though. It wants to take with the knight. I would have honestly thought the other way. Like this was Black's primary move, and knight takes would be my second choice. But White did not take on c5. Or did he take on c5? No. Yeah, because it's, there's no gain, so it takes on c5. It, I guess the truth is, like, there's no rush. I don't think that black has necessarily a favorable way of resolving the tension. Maybe white can take on c5 when he wants to take on c5. Black can take on d4. And that's going to change the situation a little bit, though. So maybe it, it is relevant. Well, if, if takes on d4, we have queen d4. This is a developing move, rook f d1. And now there's nine games with rook c8 or queen e7. You would think like knight e4 would be a logical move as well. Zero games with knight e4. I don't think it's so easy to get rid of that knight on e4, honestly. <clears throat> Number three move, number two move, number one move. Ninety four is the number one move of the engine, and it's never been played in nine games. I'm glad I'm not crazy though, because that move appeals to me. I would certainly be concerned about my what happens if ninety four. It's amazing that in nine games no one played that. Queen e seven. This game is from ninety six. And I think this is, this is, um, in a way, re reacting to that, because now if ninety four we have f three. I was afraid if ninety four, honestly, what's he gonna do? Would would Korchnoi let go queen e one? I mean, Gelfand. Is that the idea to go here to e one? I would think he would go to e one because on c two your queen is kind of exposed on the c file. It seems like you're just asking for trouble here, honestly. What do you guys think? I think definitely e1, although it is a strange, it's kind of strange position for the white queen. And then something like f5, watch the long diagonal. <laughs> queen e1, queen f1, g3, queen h3, wow. That's creative. 
I just want to get this knight off my face. It's like a alien face hugger on E4. Um, it's just how do you get rid of that? You're gonna have to play knight D2. Knight E1. Well, knight E1 is a good suggestion for move 11. So then, then you want to play queen C2. Move 11, we go for queen C2 and knight E1. But you've got to be careful of this stuff like queen H4. I guess it's not a big deal, but theoretically, your rook's not on this square. There's complicated stuff here. So queen E7, here, here, and then, wow. So this was from Vienna. By the way, I was at this tournament. I told... I told uh, Antoni, I was in the other room while they were playing this game. the 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 Masters closed tournament was in was in a different ballroom. It was in the Rat House in Austria and Vienna. How often is your streamer, you know, telling you they played at the the town hall in nineteen ninety six? Um. It was a beautiful venue. Knight d7. But it seems like, you know, Gelfand is not getting a lot here. He's settling for a very small advantage. Playing knight e5, trading it off, sort of big deal. But the big deal is this bishop on the long diagonal. You've got a dangerous tactical opponent. I mean, Korshner was good all around, but he's most dangerous in complex positions. And Gelfand's very good at, at positional play and, and solid positions. Black now goes a4. Yeah, I never played chess in the thermal bath, though a lot of people do. I, sh I should. B takes a4, D takes c4. Very popular here in Budapest. A lot of postcards with people playing chess in the thermal spa. I live really close to the most famous one, the Secheny Ferdo. Bishop takes c4, knight e5, bishop e2, and so the moral of the story is this bishop pair. Korchnoi, of course, getting frisky with queen g5. What? So there's e4, isn't there? Oh my god. So it's a pawn sack? Damn. Basically, they both calculated this. Where Korchnoi <laughs> has these threats, white has to play e4, sacrifice a pawn, but then this move. And what happened next? So white dropped a pawn, but at the same time, not really, because the A pawn was a, was a temporary sacrifice by Korchnoi that he hasn't had time to get back yet. So the material is equal. And White has the bishop pair. Now this, and D takes C5. Rook takes D2, Rook takes D2. B takes C5. And outside pawns with bishops. That's a bad combination. The rook pawns with bishops. Korchnoi is not happy to be in a tactical endgame with this guy. And that A-pawn is a problem. It just seems like Korchnoi, you know, he didn't really work everything out carefully enough. He was risky, he was taking risks. He's playing for an attack with like Queen G5. I mean, honestly, do you expect this to work? against the player of Gelfand's level. I guess he had nothing better, though. I mean, where did black really go wrong? Here. Korshin just couldn't help himself but play actively with a4. What if he just recaptures it? Why couldn't he just be normal and take on a4? I think that's, you know, he got tempted. He got tempted into this fancy variation with ninety five, and he just didn't really fully evaluate all this. What's going to happen? 
What about CD4? Also. I'm not sure that black is lost here. I want to trade material, you know, and draw. It looks like this would have held on, honestly. Bishop d4, f6. Bishop takes b6, rook takes d2, rook takes d2, rook takes a4. Tactical endgame land. I guess this. So if you play this against Magnus Carlsen, do you lose or draw? You know, if you're black here against Magnus, for example. I guess Korchnoi didn't like this. You know, he didn't like getting tortured in this kind of endgame where white has this outside pawn, but objectively it's probably still a draw. But it's not fun, for sure. He got he got tempted, and then he made a mistake, it looks like, here, allowing this ending. And the knight on a5 is ugly. The knight on a5 is disaster. And look at those bishops. So now knight d6. If you take on b5, we take, and the pawn's getting down pretty fast. So. Gelfand doesn't care about this. He just wants to get his a pawn moving. He actually sacks his h-pawn, offers up this pawn as well. But either way he takes, he would have problems like this. Or or bishop takes and, and then some sort of attack of his knight. Bishop g5. Either way, like he probably drops material if he tries to take on g2. And then the queenside pawn is just moving. This is over. It looks over like the outside pawns are too strong with the two bishops. It's a disaster. And now bishop f3. No way to stop the pawn. Resigns. You're going to have to sacrifice a piece to stop it. That's a nice game, Antony. It wasn't easy to get the double pawns moving, you know. But fortunately, was was really tied down. All right, so last thing for today. Trip Chance submitted a quick game. That was weird. What is that? This is your mate? You beat a 482 with nine rooks? This is playing against the 482. Can you guys even see this? No, you can't see it. Sorry. I have to grab the, the moose somehow. Let's see. I'll just grab the PGN. I hope I can grab it. Oh my god, it allowed the game to go in. That's the final position. He's teaching the opponent how to play. Carlson Ladith and Igor Schneider. Well, knight f2 is not too bad. I like that she plays knight h3, though. I fully approve. She dropped a rook. It's kind of ugly. Wade lost a few pieces. But then you tortured the opponent here. Taking all the pieces is not nice.
And then you got nine rooks. That's mean. I didn't know you could get nine rooks. Actually, you can get ten, right? That feels kind of wrong that you only got nine. This is very entertaining. The highlight of my day. And not getting stalemate. I try to do this sometimes, but I always stalemate the opponent. Always when I try to troll people and do this. You got that pawn, though. You got to get rid of the pawn. Yeah, there you go. So that's pretty cool. Lots of brooks. This is fun. This is definitely a sign of mental health. See, you ought to play checkers. It looks like there's some connection here between this position and checkers. 107 moves. Torturing the newly learned chess opponent from Dr. Trip Chance. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'm going to get some rest. It's been good. It's been fun. Thanks to, to all of you who support the stream by subscribing. Thank you to, of course, Mr. Slowhand. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we're going to be back with Blitz. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you all in the a.m. at 11. 11 a.m. CET for Blitz and uh, Rapid, just Blitz, rather. Blitz against uh, random challenges tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.